Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and I am knitting, not right now, but most of the time. Before I get started, my anxiety is telling me that I have to tell you something, so just deal with it. This pothos in the corner, um, Aaron, Alexandra, I don't know if you watch my YouTube videos, but if you do, I'm working on it, okay? The story behind this pothos is that my former roommate, Erin bought it at a plant show. When Erin moved, she um, left it to Alexandra, our other former roommate. And when Alexandra moved, it was my inheritance. So I'm not going to let it die, but you can obviously tell that it's struggling. I'm working on it. I'm dealing with it, okay? I think it's the shock of the move. Anyway, let's get started with what I came here to talk to you about in the first place, which is has nothing to do uh, with plants. So let's go. So anyway, over the weekend, I got home from a trip to Oregon. It was a wonderful trip. I celebrated my sister's wedding. I got to spend time with my family at our family cabin. And I made some, I think, formative memories, not just for me, but also for my niece and nephews. So overall, it was just a wonderful time. DJ got to come and spend a few days while I was still there. And then we came home together. And of course, I got some yarn and some yarn adjacent items. So I thought I would show you my haul. So this is basically all of the... <laughs> all the things that I brought home with me from Oregon. Some of them are yarn related, some of them are yarn adjacent, and some of them are just um, things I brought home with me. So let me show you what I got. First of all, there are some items that were already waiting for me at my parents' home in Oregon. I had some items shipped directly to my parents' house instead of shipped to me in Louisiana because I knew that I would be visiting them during the month of July. So here is what was waiting for me when I arrived. Eight, eight skeins of Sorella Yarn Casita from her Netflix collection or I should say the greatest hits version of Netflix, which had many colorways re-released a few months ago here in 2023. I got a sweater quantity of Casita and I'll show you a close up of it so you can really enjoy the beautiful colors. I'm trying to minimize the crinkling because I know sensitive ears do not like that. So I got eight skeins of this on cashmere sock. When I am sample knitting or sample cranking for a dyer, if money is not the compensation, then yarn for yarn is the compensation. So what I mean by that is when Sorella Yarn sent me five skeins to make a sample knit, I then earned, upon completion of that sample, I then earned a five skein shop credit to use whenever I wanted. So. When Sorella Yarn reached out to me to knit that sample, I then took the opportunity to say, hey, I've been meaning to talk to you and I have this Dean and Bean sock cranking machine. I would love to sample knit some socks for you. And she took me up on the offer. She sent me 10 skeins of the variegated colorways from her Autumn in New York collection. And I made 10 pairs of socks for her with those 10 skeins. So between the five skein sample knit and the 10 skein sock cranking samples, I had a 15 skein shop credit. Now, I have thought about how to discuss this topic and it kind of stresses me out um, because I don't want to come across as bragging or whatever, but I figured like, I don't know, maybe that's just my anxiety talking and it's not really a big deal. Maybe it is and you can tell me, but the long story short is I have too much yarn. I have too much yarn that I already have in my existing collection and I have too much yarn coming in, whether it's gifts from dyers or collaborations or partnerships. So I have to offload some of these skeins. I physically cannot keep them just because 
space is limited and I need to protect my peace. And it stresses me out to have so much yarn around me that I know I will never have the time to knit or makeup or crochet or whatever. I will not have the time to work it up, so I need to share the wealth. So that's what I've been doing. So when I decided I was finally ready to use my 15 skein shop credit, I shared it with my sisters and they both picked out yarn that they really liked. One of my sisters had her eye on shop around the corner and it's been like on her radar since it was first released. So I really wanted to make sure she had the opportunity to purchase it this time around because who knows if it will ever come back. And then my other sister got to pick a couple skeins of her favorite colorway from the Netflix collection as well. And I decided on Casita. So after my sisters got their um, allotment, I had a credit for eight skeins left over. The shop credit is just for your basic skein, so basically a $30 skein. But because I love four ply fingering weight bases, I knew that I wanted to pay the upcharge to get cashmere sock. This is, I believe, the only four ply base in the fingering weight that Sorella still carries. She has since discontinued the four ply classic sock base, which was 100% merino. And I really loved that base and I love four ply. So I knew I wanted to pay the upcharge for this cashmere sock. The fiber content is 80% wool, 80% 80 superwash merino wool, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. And it's 435 yards per 100 gram skein. So I got eight of these to make a sweater. I don't really know exactly what sweater I'll make uh but i am excited about holding this double because i think the colors will really pop and be layered and just like add a beautiful depth to the garment that i will make with this yarn but anyway i need i'm getting off track since i wanted the cashmere sock i think this is maybe 34 dollars a skein i'll fact check myself when i edit but i think this is 34 dollars a skein so that means i paid four dollars per skein and with eight that means i paid 32 dollars out of pocket for eight skeins of yarn and excuse me but that is a steal so i am really happy with that and really happy with that partnership that I made with Ashley of Sorella Yarn. It worked out great for me. I'm not sure, like I said, what I'll make with this, but I do have eight skeins of Casita. If you have an idea of what I would make, let me know in the comments. I am planning to hold this double. So this would be for a DK or maybe light worsted pattern. And I wanna make a sweater. So let me know what you think. So that was the first thing that was waiting for me in Oregon. Eight beautiful skeins of yarn that I paid basically nothing for. So very happy about that. So yeah, so $4 out of pocket per skein, eight skeins, $32. That means I paid less than the cost of one skein of yarn for eight skeins. So plus like my labor for cranking and sample knitting and whatever, but it's still exciting. I'm so excited to be able to cash in on that and get some free luxury yarn or nearly free, I should say. The next thing that was waiting for me were two of these adorable acorn stitch markers. They are progress keepers or clips or whatever you want to use them for. These are from Simply Serving and they are so cute. They come with a light bulb clip marker connecting the acorn and I I think I paid a little bit extra to get this clip attached and I'm so glad I did and let me show you the coolest thing about these acorns they twist open and inside simply serving has included four teeny little stitch markers so you could clip this onto your project onto the fabric of your garment you could have it clipped to your needles you could clip it to your project bag there's all sorts of different ways. Let me focus so I can actually screw this on. But how cute are those? I got two of them and those were waiting for me in Oregon. I chose to clip one of them on my new project bag. So you can see it dangling right here. 
on my project bag. And that leads me to my next purchase. My mom and older sister and I had the immense privilege to go to the Portland Leather Outlet in Portland, Oregon. Oh my gosh, if you're local to Portland, please go check it out. It is so cool in there and so fun. They don't have an affiliate program anymore. I used to be an affiliate and I really enjoyed that partnership. So Portland Leather, you should uh, do that stuff again because it was awesome. Yeah, so anyway, if you're local to the Portland area, check out the outlet store. It is amazing. It has all of these colors that you might not find online and the prices are incredible. So for instance, this is a makeup bag. This doesn't come with it. I'll get to that next. So ignore this. This is a makeup bag. And I think these retail for about $50 before discount codes. And this was priced at $28. So that's already a steal. But I'll tell you something else. I'll get a close up shot so you can see. But there is a slash on this bag. So when I went to check out, I said, I don't know if y'all do this since it's an outlet store and the prices are already incredible, but there's a slash on this. Is there like a discount possible? And they gave me 20% off. So it was like 20 bucks, just a little over 20 bucks for this makeup bag that online is $50. And in fact, this pattern is not currently in stock anyway. This is the Dahlia pattern. Maybe if I block my face with it, it will focus on it, yeah. So it's just gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful bag. I got it to use as a project bag. I think that it would be perfect. See, $28. So I got it as a project bag. I think it would be perfect for a hat or maybe if I have socks that I need to sew the toes closed or if I'm starting a sweater and I just have one skein with me or two skeins, I think that this would be perfect. So I got that. And actually my sister was gonna buy this at first, but she decided to get a different size of this. So I'm actually really grateful that she decided to trade me. I did not pressure her, but she did decide to trade me the, the bags we were holding and this is a perfect size for a project bag. The next thing I got was, I forget what this is called. I think it's a mini, mini dop maybe. It's this tiny little keychain. And I think they have bigger sizes online, maybe for like shaving kits or travel bags or whatever, pencil pouches. But they had this little table of miniature ones on keychains. So of course I purchased that. And I thought I'll clip this onto my new project bag and I can use this for Notion. So I'll put a little pair of scissors in here, some tapestry needles. We'll see what else I can fit, but I think I can fit pretty much everything I would need in a traveling notions pouch and there it is already connected to my new project bag and then this little acorn attached there is just perfect and it totally matches the aesthetic and the vibe of this beautiful earthy leather gorgeous bag also while i was at the portland leather outlet i got a new wallet i was torn between two wallets one that matched this pattern, this like embossed pattern and the purple, because as you may know, I am loving purple right now. I put a poll up on Instagram and the results were overwhelmingly purple. I will tell you though, I was kind of sad when I left. I was like, maybe I should have gotten the Dahlia one or the Meadow one or whatever this pattern is called. I think it's Meadow um, and Dahlia is the black version of this. Anyway, I really love it now and I think I might send it off to get um, a fuchsia flower burned into it. We'll see. That will be a, a problem for a later day, but really happy with my new wallet. Normally it's filled with all my cards, but I took them out because it's none of your business what my cards are. So there. Okay, so we have that. Oh, I just remembered another thing. Well, two other things, actually. Two other things that were waiting for me in Oregon. Shutterfly had this deal recently where you could get magnetic or mag fridge magnets, photo magnets, for a dollar a piece. Normally, they're like $10. So I ordered some. I ordered a bunch of me holding my... <laughs> um, 
degree in my doctoral regalia and I thought I would just give this to my family, people in my family who want them. I don't know. DJ has one in his in his office. Um, but yeah, so I ordered several of those. My parents have one on their fridge. I gave I gave one to my grandparents and my grandpa got kind of emotional and kissed my hand and it was really really sweet because um, they've supported me for so many years doing doing that. So that was a really special memory. And I also got a few prints of our beach cabin, our family beach cabin that was built by my great grandfather in spring of 1941. Um, it's my favorite place on earth. It's the most special, special, special place to me in my heart and to my family. And I, I will take this opportunity to tell you there's going to be a cabin collection. I'm partnering with Cesium Yarn, Cat and Penny in Roanoke. They are going to be dyeing some specialty colorways uh, that reflect my love of the cabin and some of the items in the cabin and just the overall vibe and atmosphere of the cozy nostalgia of the cabin. So keep an eye out for that. I am so excited. I've never worked with a dyer to make you know like a custom collection for myself and for others so it, it's a total it's a total trip it is so much fun it's a really steep learning curve but I am having a blast and I hope that I have more opportunities like that in the future because it's awesome if you haven't heard of Cat and Penny of CZM Yarn I've mentioned them in a few videos before but they are awesome. I'm so thrilled to be working with them and to be getting to know them better. And if you don't know them or follow them, check them out on Instagram at Cesium Yarn. The next thing that I had waiting for me in Oregon is a very special bowl. So here's the bowl. I'm not sure what this pattern is called. I once knew it, but in the moment I'm not remembering it. Um, but this is the pattern of my grandmother's dishes. This bowl is not for my grandmother. This bowl is something that my sister and her now husband, at the time fiance, saw at I think an antique store on the Oregon coast. And they sent pictures to our family chat saying, oh, these are grandma's dishes. Um, of course, a set or even a plate or a full-size bowl is astronomically expensive, but this little bowl was $12, and I told my sister, please buy that for me if you don't want to buy it for yourself, and I'll Venmo you right now, and I'll use it for trinkets and stitch markers and stuff. Um, if you've been here for a minute, you know that I am extremely nostalgic. Objects have an, an extremely important... Um, I don't know, they just function as a connection for me to my past, people I love, special memories. Um, so I have kind of, in the, over the last few years, made it my unofficial mission to surround myself with nostalgic objects. So even though my grandmother did not own this bowl, this did not come from my grandmother's house, whenever I look at this, I'm going to think of my grandmother and my grandfather, and I'm going to be just filled with nostalgia and happiness. So I'm really excited and thankful to have this bowl. So thank you to my sister for buying that for me. Um, this was waiting for me and now it is safely here with me in Louisiana. And oh, that brings me to, I have a few other things, but let me go over the next nostalgia thing. Let me go grab it and I will show you the nostalgia that I have. Okay. This is the next nostalgic item that I brought home with me from Oregon. This is a hymnal from the church that I grew up in, and it's incredibly nostalgic for me. And it's um, layered also because I have a lot of fond memories of this church and growing up there, but also I have a lot of um, things that are painful to remember as Maybe you can relate to also, I'm covering up the embossed name of the church because I don't know, privacy, but I have since learned that this is a mass produced hymnal. Churches all over the country, maybe all over the world have this hymnal. 
I always thought it was special and specific to my church, but it's not. It's distributed out of Texas. My church was in Oregon, but the name is embossed in gold on the bottom to match this emboss um, of the title. So that's what makes it special to me. And I talked about how the cabin is very special to me. My great grandfather built it. My, my grandfather grew up going there. My father grew up going there. I grew up going there. It is incredibly special. And even though the church I grew up in is fraught for me in many ways, remembering all the things that I experienced there, there's lots of joy, but there's also lots of pain. An interesting layer to that is my great grandfather and my grandfather also built the church. Um, or, you know, they weren't the only ones doing that, but they were like basically founding fathers of the church. Um, but anyway, so this is like, in many ways, I see it as part of my family legacy. So I'm very thankful to have a hymnal from that church, even though I, um, even though I don't need this for worship and remembrance or celebration, because that is not something I do now, but I'm very thankful to have this hymnal. Okay, transitioning out of nostalgia, let me now show you my actual yarn purchases. So every time I go home to Portland, I make sure to visit Starlight Knitting Society. If you haven't been there, it's a great local yarn shop in Northeast Portland. And guess what? When I went there, when I went there, listen, when I went there, I was recognized. Isn't that wild? That has never happened to me before. It may never happen again. And it was weird, but it was so cool. But I was like, should I think this is cool? Maybe this is normal. But to me, it was really cool. So um, <laughs> thanks. That was that was cool. Okay, so anyway, here's what I bought at Starlight Knitting Society. I bought a skein of Universal Yarn Easel. This is kind of a self-patterning-ish yarn. And... I don't think this is the same um, line of Universal Yarn that I have purchased in the past. There are two other skeins that I've purchased on separate trips of Universal Yarn to crank socks. And even though this is, I don't think it was Easel that I bought. I'm not sure. Um, but I bought this to crank a pair of socks as my third souvenir pair of socks from Starlight Knitting Society and Trips of Portland Past. So happy with that purchase. I also, whenever I go to Starlight Knitting Society, I am sure to purchase a Tuft Woolens product. Tuft Woolens, if you don't know, makes wool wash, um, hand balm, lip balm, things like that. And their scents are incredible. I have a few different scents. This one is 5th and 57th. It's a bar of wool wash soap. I have a few Tuft Woolens wool washes, but I've never actually used them as wool wash. Sorry, I, I'm sure they're wonderful, but what I love to do is stick it in my cedar chest and then all my yarn that lives in my cedar chest or all my finished objects that live in my cedar chest, depending on which cedar chest I'm putting it in, will smell like the bar of wool wash. So just smells incredible. I'm really happy with this scent. This smells like almost like, like cologne on a spring breeze or like a night, night breeze. I don't really know how to describe it, but it smells really good to me. I really am happy with that scent. I also got a Tuft Woolens lip balm. I think it's probably somewhere in my notions pouch or my purse somewhere, but I got the cardamom flavor. I wasn't sure or scent, I should say, because I'm not eating it. It's not a flavor. It's a scent. Who cares? But I was debating which one to get, and um, one of the employees there, I she said cardamom is amazing. It's her favorite one. So that's the one I got, and it is really nice. It's like, maybe you already know what cardamom smells like or tastes like. I, I didn't, um, but it's like this really nice nutmeggy, warm, almost spicy but not um and it's great it's great I'm really happy that I got that one the next thing I got were two buttons 
I'll show you a close up of these. They're like in a little basket at the checkout. And so you can like kind of thumb through them while they're ringing you up. And um, sorry, couldn't say no. So I got two of those. I also got this Loran, Lo Loran, not sure, Norwegian knitting thimble. This is my absolute favorite knitting thimble. There are a lot of knitting thimbles out there and at least for me and my preferences, they are not all created equal. This is my favorite. I buy it whenever I see it on Amazon. It's been upcharged. They cost about $10 on Amazon. Maybe that's changed. I'll put a link down in the description box. If you want to pay $10 or whatever the price is, if you're desperate for a good one, this is the one I recommend. At Starlight Knitting Society, it was $4.50. So of course I grabbed one. I wanted to grab them all, but I didn't want to be greedy. I wanted to leave it for the next lucky maker to get one if they wanted. So I only took one and that was really hard for me to do, but I did it. I also got two Chiagu fixed needles. I don't know where the other one is, somewhere in my purse somewhere, but I got two Chiagu fixed needles because I thought maybe I'll need them for my project. I didn't, I didn't get far enough to need them, but now I have two pairs of fixed needles um, in case the tips of these size are in different projects at some point for my interchangeable set and I can't find them and I need another one or whatever. I only like using Chiagu needles. I have a whole collection of circular fixed I have a whole collection of fixed circular needles from when I first started knitting and I don't use them. Bamboo, aluminum, uh, plastic. They're just like, to my hands, they're garbage. I'm sorry, I hate them. Um, everyone has a different preference. My preference is they're trash. So I use Chiagu, so it's always good to have more on hand. And then the last thing I purchased at Starlight Knitting Society is this handy tool from Susan Bates. Basically on one end it's a crochet hook and on the other end it is a pointed, almost like a double pointed needle. So you could use this if you drop a stitch or if you need to do other repairs and it was like two dollars. So I got it and I got the purple one. Okay so now that I've shown you my yarn purchases, let me show you the yarn that was waiting for me when I got home. So I checked my P.O. box today and the package I was expecting to be in there, surprise, it was in there. So let me open it up and show you what's in here. I don't see scissors nearby and I'm a nail girl from having wedding nails and I don't want to ruin them. I just got one repaired this morning actually. Um, so I'm going to use my handy tool from Starlight. Ha! Huh, look at that. All right, so let me take this out so the crinkling stops. All right, this yarn is Knitting for Olive yarn. I've never worked with it before. It is a cotton merino blend. And You Knit Co, E-W-E, Knit Co, sent me this because I'm participating in their Florencia Knit Along. The cast on day was actually last week, but I was not home yet, so I couldn't cast on. I would like to cast on today for the knit along. If you want to participate in the knit along, I'll put a picture of the Florencia um, top right here. It's a really beautiful fingering weight top with some um, eyelet details to make a really fun and geometrically beautiful design. So I'm excited to participate. If you want to get the pattern on Ravelry, you can use the discount code Florencia K A L. The K A L stands for knit along and that will give you 20% off. Not sure if the coupon's still active, but you might as well try the code and see what happens. And then add that to your project page and get going. So this is in the colorway soft blue. This yarn is 70% organic cotton and 30% wool. It says RWS wool. I'm not sure what that means. If you know, let me know. I'm excited to use this yarn I've never used knitting for olive before and it looks so soft and that will make a beautiful beautiful top and i'll cast that on today i actually need to email them because they said they'd send me the pattern and i thought maybe it will be 
in the package, but it's not, so I'll have them send it to me digitally. And I have one more yarny package that arrived while I was gone, so let me go grab that. I forgot to grab it. Let me go grab that, and then I'll come show you. Okay, I'm back. Here is my package from Kate of Mezzo Makes, and I recently learned it's supposed to be Mezzo, not Mezzo, but Kate said we could call it Mezzo for her yarn company name. So this is from Mezzo Makes from her Greatest Hits collection. <sighs> Kate and I have become good Instagram friends, and she knows that I have my Purple Dance Goes and I love clonking around in them. And when she was doing a colorway reveal for this color, she tagged me in an Instagram post and said, listen, everyone, imagine that you are wearing these with your purple dance goes just like Rachel of Rachel is Knitting. And then that caption sold me. I couldn't say no. So I got a sock set. Let's open it up. Oh, and on her packaging, it's so cute. It says, hello, beautiful. It's a happy mail day. Yes, it is. Or no, I didn't get a sock set. I just got a skein. A skein of the 90s Taco Bell throwback. So this is based on the interior decoration of the Taco Bell restaurants in the 90s. If you were around in the 90s, you may have fond memories like I do of going to Taco Bell and having this beautiful purple, blue, a little bit of pink color scheme and Kate flawlessly turned it into yarn. And yes, I will be cranking these into socks to wear with my dance clothes so I can clonk around campus as I mold young minds this fall. So very excited about that. But yeah, that's my haul. That's what I came home to. That's what I brought home with me. Lots of yarn, I think 10 skeins total between, or no, not 10 skeins. So between the yarn that I had waiting for me at my parents' house, the yarn I purchased while in Oregon, and the yarn I had waiting for me back home in Louisiana, this is 17 skeins of yarn. So that's a pretty good haul. I am not mad about that. So anyway, that's what I got. Let me know if you have questions about any of these things or if you have ideas of what to make with that casita yarn. Remember, I have eight skeins of this and I'm going to hold them double to make a DK or light worsted weight sweater cardigan or pullover either one works so if you have ideas let me know and I can't wait to hear what you think I should make I'll put links in the description box for all this stuff if you want to grab some of them yourself so yeah I think that's pretty much it so anyway if you enjoyed this video it would mean a lot if you gave it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell if you want to be one of the first to see when I upload new content. And last but not least, head over to Instagram and follow me at Rachel is Knitting if you don't already. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.